hello traders it's samurai trader here welcome to this training session how to scalp and day trade your way to financial freedom trading divergence we've got a lot to cover in this session I hope to try to keep it to 30 minutes we'll see how we go first of all there is a risk in trading uh, don't trade with the rent money what I recommend is you pause the recording and read the disclaimer uh, very very important traders of course that you master the art of trading before you start in simulation before you start uh, trading real money uh, as always my videos are raw real and unedited so if there's any blips on the way you'll have to forgive me just a very very quick advertisement please make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel where you'll be able to keep be kept up to date with all of my videos better still visit my website I'm a day trader.com become a member for $197 you receive over 15 uh, of my day trading swing trading strategies there are hundreds of videos now free indicators cheat sheets manuals it's the most comprehensive program in the world I'm serious go to my website and see for yourself and of course don't forget to request my free training manual so click on the link below traders that's the end add over let's move on <clears throat> okay excuse me so trading is nothing more than a pattern solving exercise the market has a memory we see the same patterns in every market day in day out and so it makes trading a lot easier and tra trading is not rocket science it's about patience and pattern recognition yet at the same time we have a certain number of challenges with trading divergence first of all I love the saying the person who chases two rabbits catches none that is when you're attempting to trade a divergence trade quite often if that trade fails you miss out on a really good with trend trade so that's one of the challenges with that and unfortunately for traders uh, traders continually are trying to pick tops and bottoms now I'm going to be showing you and giving you some real techniques today on how to pick tops and bottoms however what I highly recommend until you master the art of trading with the trend you stick with trend trading initially okay master that then you can add divergence trading now at the same time I love divergence trading and you'll see why in a few moments now in training members uh, what you got to really do is really learn how to pick a trend then how to pick a change in trend okay so we've there's a number of classic patterns we see like the ABC uh, some of these won't mean anything to to non-members but I'm going to show you in, in, in a moment a lot of patterns so uh, some of these are not going to be relevant to you but what is relevant is the type of counter trend trading strategies you've got first of all pivot bounces which I'll show you pivot bounces are fantastic that is floor pivots uh, virtually every trading platform now you've got um, uh, floor pivots as a standard indicator when you get a pivot bounce uh, along with divergence that's what we call a loaded trade then we've got the snapback the snapbacks rather unique and that can be a, a major move due to news now with some of those major moves that we have where we get a reversion to the mean where it snaps back in the opposite direction if it's news based purely sometimes I move that quickly you don't have the opportunity opportunity to actually trade them other times you can but I'll show you what I mean on the charts very soon double tops double bottoms we just had a great one on ES actually let me just show you this and let's just go to the chart now just make sure I've got the right one comes up there we go uh, if we go and look at the ES right now so I'm recording this during the globex session so the market uh, here down below we can see here it's um now just make sure I've got my timing right yes okay so right there we had a beautiful double top so this is during the globex session so the market opened uh, around 20 minutes ago back here on the so this is uh, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time so we have the market opened uh, we've rallied up this is the ES Renko this is a four tick brick okay so we've got a four tick brick $50 per brick and you can see here we had our classic double top now what made this so good and let me just move this over for you this is what you would have been looking at at the time 
okay is you can see we also had divergence and you had extended divergence here so you had divergence on your anchor chart and you had divergence on what we call our entry chart now I should just point out I love trading with three charts I've got what we call my entry chart I then have my anchor chart anchor chart one and I've got anchor chart two now for newer traders you can actually quite comfortably get away with just having two charts okay so you've got to always got that higher time frame why trading with the train we want to be trading in the direction of the higher time frame but let's get back to this so double tops double bottoms very easy to recognize and uh, we'll go through a few rules with those in a moment then we've got the classic t19 now a t19 is a code you may notice we code all of our setups but a t19 is just where you've got standard divergence on your entry chart and that's also your lowest probability divergence when you've got divergence such as a 1d 2d or a 3d that's where you've got divergence on your higher time frames much more much more powerful signal now Larry Connors has said this but philosophically I live in a world world of reversion to the mean when it comes to trading what that simply means is something stretched too far will snap back and that's where we come to the t3 and I'll show you some of these classic moves in a moment on the charts so if we look at what makes up divergence now we're going to talk about standard divergence today rather than hidden divergence I've never really been a big hidden divergence student or, or fan I love standard divergence so if we look at this price action here we can see down here that I've got a lower low on price and on my divergence indicator I've got a higher low lower low on price and a higher low on my oscillator to go short I've got a higher high on price and a lower high on my oscillator now if we're trading and talking double tops we would have a double bottom or a double top with the same thing happening with our oscillator the market loves to try things twice okay quite often many times if it pushes down twice it fails it will rebound now if we look at there's a gentleman actually wrote a book um, I was called uh, trade of methods of Wall Street mastery he wrote his book back in 1991 so what's that about 29 years ago now and he become quite famous with this setup and this is on a time-based chart uh, with his um, uh, 2b buys and he's also got what we call his 2b sells so the name of a book is methods of a Wall Street master and also Suri Dadella who's quite famous for his um, trade patterns like the pros in his book he covers uh, this quite extensively as well and the difference here is going back 29 years ago of course computers weren't used like they are now so we're talking about exactly the same thing except we want to see an oscillator working in our favor as well so here we've got a higher high on price and we'd like to see a lower high on our oscillator likewise if we were going long we've got a lower low on price and we would have a higher low on our oscillator and we're looking at an entry here as well and I'll show you how we do that on our charts in a moment so let's go through some basic rules that are absolutely what I call non-negotiable when it comes to trading divergence first of all do I have divergence on a MACD uh, you can use a number of different oscillators for it you've got the MACD you can use a CCI uh, you might use with CCI an 8 period to up to a 14 period I like to I've got a custom MACD that I use and you can actually adapt a normal uh, MACD to virtually model it exactly but because I like trading very short-term uh, divergence mine's very very tight okay but you can use a MACD a CCI set to a period of 8 to 14 works really well you can use um, an RSI of uh, Larry Williams percent R works um, brilliantly as well so there's a number of oscillators indicators you can use to help you there now of course you can also be a pure price action trader and just trade purely off the pattern but what is very important is this do I have angulation 
so what exactly is angulation well let me just show you on this chart here this is angulation here are my EMAs okay and you can see here how price is angling away and this is actually a live trade I took where I shorted on the NQ five contracts so you can see our price is angling away the steeper the angle the better it is very very important you have angulation what you've got to be careful of traders even though we don't have a divergence trade here we see this a lot where it looks like divergence notice how price action is fairly much running parallel in a tight channel with my gold EMA my 34 notice how it's running very much in parallel here that's the channel this is where divergence traders get killed now this is what's really important to me from my entry and when I trade divergence trade I want to enter on the close of the third candle or brick we will look at some tick charts this is Renko so you can once again you can trade with time based charts Renko uh, volume uh, range it really doesn't matter it just comes down to personal preferences but what is important that I have a confirmation of the trade okay so that's why I wait for or I wait to close below my blue trigger line if I'm looking at tick charts which we will look at so what's important from what from the close of a third candle to my yellow EMA we call it follow the gold is there a distant enough distance there for me to make a profit if there's not I will give the trade a miss unless I have divergence on higher time frames as well so there that qualifies now this one up here I ended up taking as a live trade now you it's maybe a little bit hard for you to see but I had divergence there on my anchor chart and it was also what we call a 200 EMA overshoot this makes it a very very high probability trade okay so that was 16 ticks $400 less commissions okay but that's angulation where price angles away from your EMAs now you can use standard moving averages but what's important is we get that angulation now also do I have a double top or double bottom that's important or do I have a higher high on price or a lower low on the chart so on the chart with price action do I have a higher high and I like to see what I call a V and what I mean by the price rallies up comes back down and rallies back up again I tend to find the very best divergence trades are when you've got that V setting up okay it's like the market pushes up people profit taking we get what we call it a 2b to see a nice trade rallies up and away we go uh, the next one is where are the EMAs where will price bounce and that is also very important to us because the this one right here just there is actually oh no you could still classify that you got a little bit of divergence there and you got divergence there so that is actually a 2d just there it comes down and we get a bounce if you've got just very low probability divergence you will usually bounce on the gold okay so on our yellow EMA follow the gold will usually bounce and you can actually see there you had a little bit of a bounce that's profit taking when you've got a double divergence or divergence on higher time frames you'll usually come down to our 89 and we'll usually so these are what we call price magnets so let's look at some examples so what we've got there is our classic double divergence where you've got divergence on a couple of different charts now what is important is the formula so we've got a formula that we use to set up our entry chart and our anchor charts so we then go to here now I've got a tick chart now this is a tick and I've got the tick chart right next to a Renko so we love Renko charts but at the same time I always have a relevant time based chart or, or a tick chart that's sort of relevant to the speed or thereabouts of the Renko why quite often you'll get um, because with look with Renko they're beautiful for smoothing out price action 
they they're great for that but you can also lose some valuable information such as divergence now you actually had it started to set up but it's not so obvious there now it is very obvious here now here also we had what we call a slingshot tra uh, trade entry just there so you can see our slingshot just there uh, which is nice and the only obvious sign over here was the tail on the Renko and yes traders tails are very tradable as long as they're not too far into the trend on Renko charts so what we like to do is look at both Renko and tick charts so this here was our classic t19 okay and always we want to know what's the distance from my entry to the 34 next one here we'll look at here here is uh, what we call a t3 now a t3 is one of these mean reversions trades where you get this big move like this now we always like to look at the tick chart in this particular case this is on the ES we had what we call a great bubble now when we explore this trade see the angulation trader see that see how price is angling away you've got that big angle away you basically got a wedge being driven in the price then it snaps back these are a very high probability trade even more so when you bounce on a floor pivot now that's a midline pivot uh, which is just as good but we went straight through it so if you've got a pivot bounce and a t3 or a standard divergence trade you've got a much higher probability trade coming off now we look at this one down here I've got a classic 2d you can see here I've got a lower low there's my V I've got a lower low on price we're not going to discuss all the other trades we had here but there is my divergence and look over at your anchor chart lo and behold I've got a pivot bounce so I've got a pivot bounce divergence divergence this is what we call a loaded trade okay they're very very whoops sorry about that high probability uh, where are we yep so you've got a pivot bounce you just can't quite see it there and that's where you've got to be very cautious uh, so if you had have entered a trade here you always know want to know where your pivots are okay so what I've got here on this particular chart is a double top so we won't worry about the other trades here but right there we can see we've got a double top and see how we've got a slight height difference look it doesn't matter if you're out within a couple of ticks looks like a duck walks like a duck it's a duck okay so there you can see we're out by a couple of ticks so that's sort of a great double top and what makes this even better it's in the direction of the trend and actually we call these bet the farm trades okay because when you've got a double top with divergence and we actually had double divergence in the direction of the trade they're a really loaded trade now down here we've got on the midline pivot we've got a great double bottom again okay so there we had a double bottom with divergence over here we had a lower low with divergence now the, the highest probability divergence trades will be when you're bouncing off the pivot so you did have a 2d there and it delivered nicely but your highest probability uh, on the pivots now if you're trading oil for black gold I recommend you always want to be trading either a round number or off a pivot now if you're on the NQ the ES they're not too bad for trading if you're not at the pivot where you're not getting the pivot bounce as well but uh, definitely on oil you really want to wait for those pivots uh, this is here this is actually on oil itself so here I've got a lovely double top uh, and at that start I didn't take that for some reason but I took this t10 which is off the double top okay and that was still a nice little eight tick trade thank you very much off that so you t10 after you get these double tops and look at this on my anchor chart see that there so I've got beautiful divergence what you tend to find in our targets we, we actually target the cyan so when you've got a double top with double divergence you get you you know a very high percentage about 90% of the time you'll come down and hit the cyan uh, EMA now we nearly always get a bounce off the gold nearly always that's profit taking and this is where you've got to learn even if you're a trend trader you still want to clearly understand divergence trading because you want to know when to stop taking trend trades where we want to be extremely cautious of taking a trend trade is if you're off 
double divergence 2ds as nearly every time we'll get a bounce on the 34 but then we retrace okay and we that's actually we call that a kaching trade or a t10 okay and look at your um, long-term stochastic coming down there at that stage let's look at another example we're looking at the tick chart now this is uh, on the black on the black gold on the, the Texas tea the crude oil uh, during the globe session this is an 89 tick during the uh, main trading session <coughs> excuse me I like to trade the 233 tick after hours the globe session where you've still got some great trading opportunities and it's great if you get home from work you want to trade after hours if most of my um, I've got over 8,000 members now most of US based or Europe you get home from work you've got the after hours market you've still got on oil ES some great trading opportunities and even with the 10-year note if you're very patient and we'll have a look at the 10-year note uh, in a moment too because we just had a beautiful double top and look traders they say that yes you can look back at something afterwards and say well that was easy to pick but they're also very easy to pick from the right hand side of a screen if you know what you're looking for so we've got a high high in price that's a nice little short that I took um, uh, and now the thing there is to consider adding if you're trading the maximum you want to risk is 2% of your account so say if you're only trading 1% you get a double top like this can you add to the position absolutely okay uh, this is another one here another short now this was just a t19 just a standard divergence trade a nice little trade there are seven ticks this is on the es2 tick Renko there's my little V my high high on price and there is my divergence thank you very much 437 less some um, about $20 in commissions but so what are we looking at now down here see this here traders you've got uh, you got an overshoot this is a t3 see the angle on my anchor chart and see this here see that wedge formation that's been driven there you also had a t3 there as well okay now here this is just a nice t3 and a pullback when you have a t3 always expect a 34b straight after always okay um, look if it's an extremely high I might but I'm always expecting to bounce on the, just a very high proportion of them will uh, until I start to get divergence on a higher time frame when I get divergence on a higher time frame I'm expecting to pull back to the cyan uh, here we've got another great example of a 2d we've got a high high in price higher high in price divergence divergence thank you very much and a pullback to the cyan and this is where when you get 2d's very steep divergence your bounces thereafter become a lower probability trade uh, we've got here this is just a little scalp now this was a loaded trade here and this is on the ES now it may not look much there but these are that was actually uh, six ticks on ten contracts there okay so what I had there was a couple of things first of all on my highest time frame these you take every day these are just a brilliant strategy of trading the EMA bounces on your higher time frame after we get what our super scalper plots so see my divergence divergence so just imagine you were on the right hand side of the screen and you couldn't see anymore what you would see is a lower high a lower high a higher high major EMA bounce the white candle the super scalper plots on the third candle thank you very much it's a no-brainer trade now we come here we come on down this is what we call a, a uh, floor pivot overshoot so just here we ended up having some divergence and just there so we had divergence on the anchor chart and that delivered nicely I didn't trade that one I took this one here this one it was actually a 2d it's mislabeled there is my divergence and look over at the higher time frame thank you very much now we look at the tick charts again now what you've got to be very cautious of 
with divergence trades you see above I also had a floor pivot just above there you have to be very careful because floor pivots are what we call magnets sometimes you'll have a divergence trade set up just below the pivot it, it all looks great got everything looks fantastic on the setup but you take it and immediately it bounces up to the pivot like this one here now that actually followed through uh, because what actually happens is floor pivots are magnets and price gets attracted so you want to be very very careful so there you actually had a standard t19 then down here we then had a 2d what makes it a 2d high high in price divergence divergence and thank you very much then it turned into a pivot magnet trade and we rallied up so be very careful with divergence trade when divergence trades when you're very close now what we've got here is we rallied up and we've got a t3 we've got no divergence no divergence no divergence but look at that angulation see that how price angles away and what are we bouncing off we're bouncing off the floor pivot so we can see here this is our midline pivot bounce what was once uh, resistance becomes support so you can see we've got lots of support 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 we come on down and that right there is also what we call a pivot magnet trade that's where you sell into the pivot now with oil you'll notice traders that on the 20 cent 50 cent uh, and round numbers at 74 75 uh, you'll see I always have and drop in a horizontal line these are also very very strong support resistance levels uh, on oil very unique to oil so when that comes up that looks great what I like to do is always look at the tick charts so this is the relevant tick chart now this is what we call a bubble and here is a little secret on trading divergence particularly these severe moves uh, on uh, tick charts note how price action has moved away see that there it's gapped away from the trigger line see that and see over here on my anchor chart see how price action has gapped away this is a pure mean reversion trade when you see that sell the farm okay you want to put the lead on it bet the farm on it okay these are I'm only joking you never ever go beyond your normal risk management rules but there is a great we call them bubbles because they burst all right and it comes down but you see these patterns these are all patterns that we see every day and the last one here is this is another example here of a t3 this is looking at your Renko now on the Renko uh, you can see here we had virtually no other entry re-entries there now quite often um, probably 50% of the time these are not tradable anyway they move quickly but the other half of the time they're very very tradable and this is why we look at our tick charts is we've got slingshot trades on the way up so where we might have missed out on any re-entries on a Renko we had some nice with trend trades on the way up now we get up here and this is a definite mean reversion trade look at the angle of price action from the EMA see that there so what we look at traders is this is we want to close below our trigger line which is our blue line okay that is our trigger to close below the trigger line right there for a very very nice trade so traders when it comes to divergence trading there are some fantastic opportunities but look what I say to all traders is really the secret to mastering the art of day trading and scalping is really this and I call it Curly's law and I know many of you and existing members if there are any existing members watching this and any uh, members that have seen my videos be, um, before I talk about um, uh, Curly all the time. So Curly, you may remember, is that uh, Jack Valance, a great late Jack Valance, uh, out of a movie, um, City Slickers. They're riding back, and Mitch, who is Billy Crystal, said, um, uh, Curly said, "You know what the secret of life is?" He holds his one finger up. Mitch says, uh, um, Billy Crystal says, um, uh, "Your finger." Curly says, "One thing, just one thing. You stick with that, and the rest don't mean shit." But what's that one thing and Curly smiles and said 
that's what you've got to find out when it comes to mastering the art of day trading it comes down to focusing on only one or two strategies initially and you build from there you start with your trend trading now very quickly I just wanted to show you and I did mention here so make sure you become a member traders uh, I mentioned there was the the double top on oil uh, sorry on uh, the ES but also then on the 10 year note so if we look at the 10 year note here we can see here we had a beautiful double top so this is uh, 5 p.m. Eastern stand sorry central standard time that's when the market reopens so reopens here one of the huge advantages we've got in trading the 10 year note the uh, broken margins are only very low because it's relatively low volatility when it comes to the note you're looking at um, 1563 I think it is 1562 63 per tick which is what one of these green uh, that's per tick there this is a one tick Renko and you can see here how price rallied up to the floor pivot there and then I formed a little double top and the, my entry is actually the close of the third candle and I'd already got this underway so I'm not on this trade here now down here one two three four just say five tick let's just be conservative five ticks is and that's been down seven or eight ticks now five ticks is seventy eight dollars on this market uh, and you know it's just a really reliable uh, trade there now that trade there now there's our classic 34b it was two minutes after the market opens I usually like to give the market about five minutes before we fire off any trades but what makes this a no-brainer look over at your anchor chart what have we got we've got a higher high on price I've got a lower high on my MACD and I've got a pivot bounce a double top on my lowest time frame and a pivot bounce traders that is a no-brainer um, uh, divergence trade these are you know you could trade these all day and you'd be happy the rest of your life just looking for these patterns now why don't we just have a very quick look at oil uh, that's the four tick let's look at the two tick oil um, look just there see this just here right straight away I look down here see that just there there's a high high there's a lower low and see how we're bouncing off for 20 now oh that is a no-brainer as well remember on that um, other time frame I showed you it was actually a short trade we were bouncing off for 200 that's why you would take this trade every day of the week so on your high time frame you take that you take that and that's is this one here and that's another strategy again but these kick butt as well so not only have I got divergence what I've actually got is a 2b on higher time frames so try this become a member you'll learn all of these uh, there's just um, once again visit my website have a look at everything uh, once again divergence trading can be fantastic but I really recommend you master trading with the trend and then move on to divergence trading thanks very much